Hello. Hi. Uh, very good morning, and uh, welcome to this uh, Health and Mon uh, session uh, today. Uh, this is the first uh, session uh, we are having on uh, uh, Health and Mon, and uh, we have uh, some of the follow-up uh, discussions in the unconference also uh, today, uh, today at uh, five o'clock and uh, uh, tomorrow as well. So. Uh, let me introduce myself uh, first. I'm uh, Divakar, and one of the architects working at uh, HP, and I've been working on uh, cloud uh, software that we built in HP. And uh, uh, today, I'm going to uh, take you through the journey what we had with uh, Health and Mon, <coughs> and uh, mainly the Health and Mon is a cloud monitoring software which we have built on top of OpenStack. So we'll know more about uh, what is uh, Health and Mon is about, and we have uh, uh, shown interest in providing the monitoring solution for the uh, OpenStack cloud, and uh, uh, also we have uh, implemented some of the blueprints out there, which is out there in the uh, OpenStack uh, blueprints, and we'll walk you through that one. So. Uh, when we start with the OpenStack uh, cloud, so you you see the OpenStack cloud with uh, network, compute, and the storage. So you see the different uh, personas here. So you have a cloud admin, you have a tenant admin, and you have a, a cloud user. So if mainly we, we, if we take uh, three uh, different personas, we see the cloud admin, tenant admin, and the cloud user. And the, the way uh, these three personas uh, see the data, it's, uh, it's going to be different compared to what he's looking for or she is looking for. So here uh, we have this uh, Health and Mod module, which is sitting on top of uh, OpenStack and looking at the OpenStack cloud deployment. And uh, it mainly looks for and it provides uh, cloud inventory and it will uh, learn about what this OpenStack cloud is deployed on and what is the hypervisor uh, behind the scenes, what is there, and it will provide the cloud inventory data. And also it looks for the cloud resources and for the cloud resources it finds the uh, utilization uh, data for, for the uh, cloud resources and uh, at the same time it, uh, it provides the alerts and notifications and the uh, data for the uh, thresholding based on the alerts and notifications and utilization data. So uh, mainly we want this uh, Healthamon uh, solution uh, to be the main monitoring solution for any of the OpenStack uh, uh, cloud resources that you would see in the cloud and also uh, for any of the components that you will see as, a de as deployed in uh, OpenStack. So, As part of this one, uh, there are many functional areas we want to cover, and we want to provide uh, a common architecture uh, using which you can monitor different uh, uh, components and cloud resources, as well as the cloud uh, deployments that you will see in the, in the cloud. So we are looking for a pluggable architecture, which is similar to what we have seen uh, with the OpenStack, other uh, components like Nova, where we have uh, different uh, pluggable drivers uh, for different uh, implementations that you will see. So similar to that one, we have a pluggable architecture defined for Health and Mon, where you can plug in uh, different uh, uh, drivers for which caters towards the different uh, hypervisors that you will build your cloud on and uh, uh, using the uh, OpenStack. So we have defined a standard uh, a resource model and a persistence model uh, for, uh, for uh, Health and Mon, wherein uh, uh, we will define a resource model which will work for most of the cloud resources that you will see in, in, in the cloud today. And uh, there are uh, different uh, choice points here uh, with the resource model, whether you, we, we want to go with a, a generic model or a specific model. Or So right now uh, we have defined one resource model and that's a debatable uh, one, which one will say whether we want to go with a generic model to uh, persist your data or you want to go with a specific model to say uh, for each and every resource that you will see, you, whether you will define one uh, particular uh, model and go with uh, persistence for, for, for the same. So we'll, we'll, we'll see more on that one uh, come in the coming slides. 
So we want to uh, provide the cloud resource uh, lifecycle uh, events. Uh, say now if you, are, uh, if you start an instance or uh, deploy a new instance, uh, when that instance gets created, we, you will get an alert, an event for the, for, for the same. And uh, you will have uh, similar events uh, provided for uh, all the monitored uh, services like uh, uh, compute, and it can be a storage, it can be a network. So it's a, another uh, event uh, collection uh, framework uh, we have defined uh, within the uh, Health and Mon module, which will provide the uh, events uh, notification for uh, different uh, services. Uh, as, as you know, uh, NOVA has the REST APIs, uh, which, which will provide the data for uh, cloud resources uh, today with the resource extensions, as well as that it provides the extension model uh, for providing the uh, NOVA APIs. So we have uh, explored the you know, extension-based uh, model today uh, to provide the Health and Mon APIs as, as an extension in the NOVA API itself. So that you can, uh, once you deploy the uh, Health and Mon solution, uh, you should be able to access this uh, uh, REST APIs to the uh, REST APIs and of the NOVA API. So uh, we are defining uh, two more components here, data provider and uh, uh, proxy drivers. So data provider, mainly we are looking at uh, providing the data uh, uh, for any of the consumers. So let's say uh, it can be a pull model and a push model, and if uh, somebody wants to have a push model, uh, they can go with a push model, and, that's, and somebody interested in doing a, a pull model, uh, they should be able to do that one. So right now, uh, we are defining this uh, as an architecture, and currently we don't have this data provider as of yet, and we are defining, uh, we are going to define that. And as part of the proxy driver, we'll talk more on this proxy driver, uh, which will drive uh, mainly the implementation for different hypervisors and uh, how we will plug it in uh, the implementations for the health and monitoring uh, solution that you will uh, have uh, behind the scenes uh, for this uh, proxy uh, compute. So when we look at the uh, different uh, cloud uh, uh, personas, let's look at the data requirements of a uh, cloud user. <coughs> So here is a cloud user, and uh, you have a, a cloud wherein uh, a user has deployed his uh, services. Okay, and uh, for the deployed services, he will use the service, and for this used uh, service, he will pay pay the bill. So what are the key use cases we are looking at uh, here? Is okay. As a end, end user, I'm interested in knowing uh, what is the current metrics of the services that I'm, de I'm deployed in terms of memory utilization, disk utilization, it can be f with respect to IO and network. And accordingly, I'm going to pay uh, for, for the same. So I might be interested in providing a history of uh, utilization data and, and the similar uh, statistics I'm looking for. And it is important to have an analytics the data for the end user uh, for the deployed uh, services. So the, likewise, uh, there might be, uh, there are a lot of use cases which, which will drive the data that is required uh, from the uh, cloud resources. So if we jump on to the uh, tenant admin. So tenant admin has a cloud and tenant admin has access to the quotas and available capacity and the images and the uh, uh, different uh, flavors. So here he can create the users here uh, for his uh, tenant. And tenants can deploy the services. And similarly, the, what a tenant, uh, a cloud user would have seen the data and what he's looking for, similar data is looked upon by the tech, uh, tenant admin, but in a different context. So if you take a uh, cloud admin's uh, perspective of a lot, if you take a, a logical view of the cloud. So now a cloud admin has access to all the services that is deployed in the, in the cloud stack. And so you will see the different uh, uh, components uh, over here, which will say if you do, today you do no managed service list. So that is basically going to give you the different services that you will see in, as part of the cloud. So a cloud admin will have access to our view of uh, the cloud uh, resources behind it, main scenes, that is the servers, network, and storage. And the cloud admin can create different tenants. 
And as part of this, uh, you will bring up a cloud wherein uh, people can subscribe for the services and deploy their services. So as part of this health and mon, you will see the data. Uh, today, uh, as part of the compute, what is the data that is published by the compute, you will see, in general, uh, inventory, which is which everybody is familiar with, that is the computes and the instances. And you have the uh, storage wherein you will deploy your uh, uh, instances onto the, uh, which is defined by an instance path. And you have a compute network. So these are the generic constructs that you will see as part of the compute network and storage within the OpenStack and for which uh, you will correlate the related user's data and as well as the alerts and notifications data and that is what you'll get. So when you compare the, a virtualized view, let's say if I built my OpenStack uh, cloud uh, using KVM, so how that this data is going to differ? So now that you have seen the computes, the instances, and the, as part of this health and mon, if you implement uh, a KVM cloud, so as part of this inventory, you will see a compute. So which if you want to have a drill down of what a compute consists of, you'll, you'll see the cluster and it can be a VM host. So today uh, we, have, we have seen that uh, with the computes, uh, no longer it is tied down to one particular host and uh, we are defining uh, different models and uh, I think there, is going, there are going to be blueprints uh, talk on in this in the Havana summit wherein we can uh, manage one compute with, uh, manage multiple uh, compute nodes. Say it can be a cluster, it can be a group of clusters, it can be a resource pool or a group of resource pool or it can be multiple uh, uh, clusters and resource pools combinations together. So as part of that, it's important to know what is what constitutes a compute today. So you may have to have a drill down between the cluster and the VM host, and similar to that instances in KVM terms, it's a VM, right? So instance path is basically a, a storage pool in the KVM, and the network uh, you'll have a virtual switch and a WIF drive, uh, WIF, WIF port. So in correlation to all the resources uh, that you will connect, collect as an inventory, you will need to uh, collect the usage data for those and also you may want to get the alerts and notifications and you may arrive at a threshold uh, uh, based on the data that you will collect. So when I look at for uh, an ESX, same inventory data, now you can see that it, as, as I told, it can be uh, a compute can be a cluster, resource pool, and a VM host. So in instances again, it's a VM here. In instance path, you know, it, uh, in the KVM case, we saw that it is, it's called a storage pool. And the, depending on uh, what hypervisor you are using for building this uh, cloud, uh, you may want to know different uh, uh, resources that is behind the scenes and also there are different properties attached to uh, individual resources when you realize that. So in the compute network, you will have virtual switch. It can be a DV switch. And there are different port groups available. And for each, again, you'll collect similar data. So when I drill down to uh, Hyper-V, so you have, again, you have a VM cluster and VM host. Instance is VM. Instance path is here, it's, uh, it's a disk volume and the computer network is virtual switch and switch port. So as you, as you see, as you see here, uh, data is differing between the different components out here and the logical construct is uh, today is the compute network and storage that you will see as one entity and if you want to have a drill down of each of these uh, implementations and if you want to make use of uh, that particular data and what uh, hypervisor uh, provides, uh, it's important to have uh, a drill down into the, or insights into the hypervisor provided uh, data. So this is the usage and the alerts and notifications corresponding to the inventory that you collect and this is what we provide as part of uh, Health and Mon, wherein we will provide the drivers, required drivers for KVM, uh, ESX and uh, Hyper-V today. 
So similarly, when I get onto the cloud infrastructure, so in the, in the infrastructure, a client admin will have uh, what is the cloud infrastructure built on. It's uh, what is the enclosure you have, server pool you have, the physical server and the virtual machines, what, uh, what disk, whether it's FC LAN you have used, whether it's SKZ LAN you have used, and what is the switch and port is connected to, and there are a lot of uh, physical uh, uh, server or physical hardware details which is available. And there are a lot of opportunity here to uh, uh, provide this kind of uh, data in, in the uh, inventory here. So uh, if you look at the uh, cloud uh, inventory uh, manager use cases for a uh, cloud admin, so these are uh, some of the uh, uh, bigger list of use cases that is available. Uh, you may want to provide a catalog of the resources that are available, which can be made use of in a scheduler uh, to make intelligence decisions about uh, uh, the inventory data which is available. You may want to have a view of the cloud resources along with its uh, usage. and you uh, this is the, uh, another uh, special case uh, what we are bringing out here is to, today uh, we can manage what is available as part of the OpenStack resource and uh, if there are any instances that is deployed outside, uh, we will not have a view. Tomorrow there might be use cases where we will say, okay, there are already deployed instances available and I want to uh, bring that one into OpenStack. So if you, if you want to do that one, uh, we should be able to do that one with this uh, inventory that we'll collect. So for an ongoing uh, management of the uh, infrastructure services, the, the metadata that you will collect, it, it may be required for an uh, autonomic or uh, uh, analytics uh, use cases, and uh, you may be able to do a, a better uh, provisioning uh, uh, judgments to where you want to deploy your uh, uh, new instances into, and uh, you can uh, make the scheduler logic better using the uh, data that you will uh, gather as part of this uh, health and more. So the, again, this is uh, more of related to the autonomics uh, data that you will collect uh, wherein you can make it in decisions to say, okay, when this particular uh, say threshold happens, uh, what action you want to take, and such stuff can be automated as part of uh, the data you collect. So likewise, you have uh, different uh, alerts and notification use cases out here for a cloud admin. And for the utilization data, you may want to collect the utilization data that uh, for each of the cloud, re cloud re resources for the analytics uh, pur purpose. Uh, you may want to do it for uh, get a better uh, uh, scheduler uh, logic and you may want to do a, a better uh, capacity planning uh, in, in order to say, okay, if I, if I collect uh, the data for utilization data for over a period of time, you may be able to identify uh, what are the uh, different uh, cloud uh, uh, workloads that you are running and uh, whether you can optimize some of the uh, workloads that you have deployed and what, uh, how many more instances I might need in, uh, depending on workload that I'm running. So you may be able to uh, get the uh, cloud, uh, cloud-based uh, thresholds uh, based on the data that we collect as the usage. So uh, currently, uh, where, where we are? So we have this uh, Health and Mon uh, module on the de deployed and which is available as open source in the in the stack under Stackforge. So. You should be able to check out the code uh, going to github.com slash uh, stackforge and, uh, and uh, health and more. So we have implemented, uh, we had uh, uh, three blueprints, inventory manager, alert notifications, and utilization blueprints uh, for KVM, and we have that implemented for KVM today. And we have the uh, build scripts available for uh, RPM, which you can deploy it in the Fedora or in a, in a CentOS. And uh, shortly, we will have the uh, build scripts even available for uh, Ubuntu. And uh, as long as you have the tar, you should be able to even deploy that one anywhere in the, in the OpenStack uh, 
um, uh, OpenStack wherever you have deployed the Nova Compute or the uh, or the controller. So this is how you will do. You'll just uh, do a git clone and go to the Elthamon directory and when you do the uh, git clone and just run this build script. So you, you should be able to get the uh, Debian, uh, sorry, uh, you should be able to get a RPM package. So how do I install and configure uh, Health and Bond? So now you know that uh, how you build the uh, RPM. So if I am if I'm using a single node setup, build the RPM. So you'll get uh, two packages today. The, there's Python Health and Bond and the Health and Bond RPMs. So you know, when you install uh, automatically, you will get the uh, scripts which will install, which will add the required uh, address for the Health and Bond in the Nova Conf. For Nova Conf uh, you, as I told uh, earlier, that uh, we are using uh, uh, Health and Mons as an uh, extension of the Nova API. So any data that you will want to access uh, for Health and Mon will go through this uh, Nova API extension, and that is, this is the entry that is required in the Nova Conf uh, to make that extension available. So this is automatically done in the uh, done by the uh, RPM package itself, and. Uh, since it is a, a KVM implementation here, Liberty URI, uh, if you are, since this is a single node setup, you can set the Liberty URI to uh, KVM colon slash slash system, which will connect to the local uh, uh, KVM instance. So similarly, if you want to uh, manage multiple KVMs, <coughs> so we have the support for uh, both SSH and SSL, and we have uh, uh, documentation available, how would you uh, set up uh, an SSH between the uh, controller node and the, and the KVM service. So similar to uh, Nova manage uh, CLI command, we have the health and say manage uh, CLI command wherein you can use it using this one, you can do a uh, DB, in some DB uh, you can set up the DB and you can do the upgrade, downgrade, like what do you do with the Nova manage. So we have a service called Elthamon today, which will start the service. So when I uh, see uh, uh, architecture or uh, 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 the deployment view of this uh, cloud, as I told earlier, uh, we have the Elthamon service, which is running on the controller. So we are trying to redefine uh, this uh, controller uh, and the uh, Elthamon architecture a little bit wherein uh, you will see this, uh, this is the controller uh, node, what you, what you have, wherein you will deploy uh, a Health and Mon collector. We are mainly breaking the Health and Mon uh, component uh, into two basic uh, components here. One is the collector which would run on the, op uh, on the controller, uh, OpenStack controller, and uh, these are some, some of the things like uh, uh, Health and Mon word proxies. So mainly this proxy is nothing but the driver that you will see in a Nova uh, compute pers perspective. Let's say now uh, if I want to manage a group of uh, KVM computes, so I should be able to do that one through this Health and Mon uh, word proxy that is there. So I can have a KVM uh, word proxy, I can have a, a Health and Mon uh, word proxy which, uh, which can manage ESX, and I can have a Health and Mon word proxy which can manage Hyper-V. So you can deploy this word proxy in, in any node. It can be a physical node or it can be a VM, VM as well. So as you can see, uh, you have this word proxy model which can be distributed across and you have a centralized service which is running and which can manage a number of nodes here. So that's how uh, we have made this one as uh, uh, address. That's how we are addressing the uh, scale out here which will basically collect the inventory usage and the alerts <coughs> data. So uh, here is a little bit of uh, further drill down into what goes into the collector and what goes into the Healthamon word proxy. So uh, here uh, you in the Healthamon collector, you will see the event listener and the handler, uh, event uh, perf data handler, and here you have the alerts notification engine uh, which collects the inventory monitor and performance monitoring data here. So if I'm trying to build a new driver for Health and Mon, let's say, 
So this is what is required. Uh, you just need to uh, write one uh, Healthmon word proxy driver, which you can deploy, and that should uh, collect the uh, required inventory and the perf data and the alerts uh, data. So as long as uh, you write this uh, word proxy, you should be able to send that one into the collector here, and the collector will process that uh, data into the DB here. Uh, currently, uh, for doing this uh, uh, inventory collection into the collector, uh, we have defined uh, a standard resource model. And as long as you uh, stick to that resource model, you should be able to uh, plug in your uh, uh, data, and you should be able to provide the data. Let's say if I, if I want to uh, build a driver which will collect the data using, say, my collect D. So using collect D, if I want to write this driver, I should be able to do that one here. And I need, I can just uh, send that data over here as long as I stick to the resource model that I have. So uh, as part of this uh, next steps uh, for Havana, uh, right now we are on Stackforge. We want to get into the uh, main uh, OpenStack. So uh, we are currently implementing the uh, these uh, blueprints for ESX and Hyper-V. We are looking for integration with uh, multiple uh, projects. And we to start with uh, integration with Salometer, wherein uh, Salometer and uh, Health and Mon together can address both the metering and the monitoring uh, solution for the OpenStack Cloud. So as I said, uh, we will soon have the uh, Debian scripts available. So here, uh, there is a switch here. You can see that uh, earlier it was dash R, and the next is going to be just uh, dash D. Uh, you should be able to just get the Debian build. So I'll quickly uh, walk you through the uh, demo of uh, the cloud data, what you have. So here I'm logging in as uh, an admin. Anne is an admin administrator here. So as part of this, uh, here you'll see the uh, Health and Mon uh, tab, tab. So here is the drill down into the uh, resource model that you will see. That is the uh, cluster, resource pool, VM host, instances. This is the, this, all these are under Health and Mon. Today uh, we do not have a view of any of the computes anywhere in the Horizon, this is just a, an attempt what we have made just to show what the data is available. And we will go with the uh, community to get buy-in from uh, all the uh, Horizon guys to what we can expose as part of the uh, Health and One out in, into the Horizon. So here uh, you are looking at a, a KVM uh, uh, host where you, you are seeing the data for the KVM host. So you have the utilization data here for the host. There are very various uh, parameters here, and uh, so say, you, you are seeing a relation between the VM host and the instances out here, and uh, you can further drill down into the uh, network switches available, port groups available. So this is the storage volume wherein uh, you, when you deploy your services, you get into. So further drill down into the VM, you will see the details related to the generic details here, utilization data over here, and uh, you have the specific details related to uh, VM disk. So you have the data related to the storage volume, and uh, if you are attached to network, you'll get the details about the network adapters or VNIX, which is available on that instance. So uh, we just looked at the uh, KVM path, and now let's just drill down into a cluster which is available as part of the ESX. So this is the cluster, what you have. There are three clusters. As part of the cluster, uh, you are seeing that this is the name of the cluster here, and uh, further drill down into the hypervisor for specific uh, details related to uh, the ESX cluster here. So. These capabilities, what we have defined here, is the DPM enabled, DRS enabled, H enabled. All, all these values are coming 
mainly from the ESX uh, cluster perspective. And these are the vendor provided uh, uh, properties which you can make use of uh, wherever is required. Let's say now uh, here in the DRS and uh, DRS case, uh, if we may able to do that, uh, make use of the DRS enabled cluster. Let's say if I want, if I always want to uh, deploy my instances onto a, a DRS enabled cluster or a highly available uh, cluster, I should be able to make use of that data when I do the uh, scheduling. So here you are looking at the capacity pool. So you, here you are looking at uh, a ESX uh, VM host, and you have uh, different instances uh, deployed over here. So we, we are still working on uh, some of this stuff here related to virtual switch and storage related to uh, ESX VM host. So here is a drill down into the uh, Hyper-V VM host. The usage data uh, at the VM host level. There are two instances which are out there on this uh, VM host. So this is the drill down for a particular uh, Hyper-V VM. Uh, here's the uh, alerts and uh, notification part. Um, all the alerts and notifications that you will see, uh, you, you can look at the instances and uh, uh, VM host also related to the storage or network, anything uh, that alerts that would come, uh, you can view it uh, in this dashboard here. And there will be, uh, this is a work in progress and we will have the drill down into what that alert is and how you can take actions based on those alerts. So that's about the uh, short demo of uh, the month. So with that, one, uh, I'll open it up for, for any of the uh, question and answers here. Uh, right now, uh, what we are looking at is providing the required data for any of the systems that want to integrate with Health and Mon and then take action based on the data <laughs> that we provide. So right now, uh, we don't have a mechanism where we can <coughs> take the action on alert that can be uh, integrated with, uh, say, if I want to integrate this with uh, Heat, which is providing a CloudWatch, and uh, we can feed the data into the CloudWatch, and uh, that can provide the required uh, action on alerts. Yeah, uh, the information uh, that we pull uh, for the inventory uh, is uh, wherever uh, we are able to do the action, uh, sorry, uh, event collection ba based on the events. Say, uh, if I'm collecting for an ESX, I can do that one based on events that is given by the uh, via SDK that I'm going to use uh, to connect to the, see the vCenter or the e ESX server. So that is very instantaneous, and you will get the uh, any of the events that is occurring or the, any of the inventory changes that will happen in an ESX environment. It'll be it'll be done uh, as as soon as it happens. And in case of uh, say KVM and Hyper-V, it can be based on uh, a polling cycle, where which we do, uh, which which can be configured as part of the Nova Nova dot conf entry. We'll uh, make by default we'll make it five minutes. And if you want to have a finer uh, interval, you can do it, say, one minute. 
uh, user data uh, today what we collect is by default is five minutes. Again, it's a configurable parameter that we can set it up in the conf, nova.conf. So you can basically collect uh, any interval you want. Yeah. So uh, the, the question is uh, how often we collect the inventory data and the utilization data. So the answer is uh, inventory data uh, we collect uh, uh, by default every five minutes. And uh, in cases wherever hypervisor supports the event mechanism, we collect the inventory whenever uh, that particular inventory change happens. And uh, in terms of uh, utilization data, we try to collect the inventory data every five minutes. So you will have a sample for uh, uh, VM host and the VM every five minutes. So right now, uh, we have not implemented the logic where uh, we persist the data. Depending on the user's requirement, users can uh, uh, pull the data from uh, uh, Health and Mon and persist the data. So we are going to define, uh, we are going to work on it uh, in the next uh, uh, blueprint to define how, my, how much of the data we want to save and how much data will be available. So that's in future. Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, thresholds uh, data data we will have, and we are looking for integration with uh, other systems wherein we can uh, define the uh, thresholds. Say, as I told, uh, heat heat is the one uh, where we can define, we can feed in the data, and we can we can define uh, what threshold rule you want to apply. Say, if I want to say have uh, my CPU utilization is beyond eighty percent, so give me an alert. So I should be able to do that one. Uh, right now, uh, we are collecting the metrics related to the CPU, memory, I/O, and uh, disk uh, network. So you said that you could also um, integrate things like uh, Collect D. Uh, Collect D is the one uh, integrate in the sense. Uh, right now, I, I showed you the. This is the picture here. So. Uh, Basically, you need to implement a word uh, proxy, which will, uh, to today, in order to interact with the KVM server here, uh, you are uh, using the uh, libword interface. So here for ESX, you are going to use the VI SDK. Similar to that one, if I want to use the collect D to interact with any of the services here, let's say I'm going to write one uh, bare metal driver. So I'm going to use collect D to collect the inventory data and uh, alerting data for uh, bare metal. So I should be able to just write that uh, driver here and plug it into this uh, service. Uh, how much overlap do you see uh, health among, uh, related to accelerometer? And uh, in the long run, if there is uh, overlap, uh, how, how do you guys to you know, work to each other? Yeah, uh, with, with uh, accelerometer, uh, what we see is that uh, mainly we are looking at the monitoring data out uh, here. And the uh, accelerometer is mainly uh, providing the metering data. So we are uh, working towards the metrics, and uh, accelerometer is having the meters. And uh, with the accelerometer and health and integration, we should have the uh, combined solution wherein we will converge on one solution to provide the metering and the monitoring data. Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, here, uh, you really don't see uh, too many uh, agents out here. We are looking at uh, a proxy model wherein you will not have one proxy for each of the uh, computes. There can be n number of computes that can be managed through one word proxy itself. You don't need to deploy a one word proxy for each of the uh, nodes here. So you can manage, say, 100 KVM hosts using one, pro one proxy. In fact, uh, if you are uh, having, a, uh, as I told you about the one node setup, right? So with that one node setup, if you want to manage hundreds of uh, KVM servers, you all that you can do, all that is required is you deploy your controller, and in the controller itself, you can run your run this uh, on word proxy.
Yeah. Uh, when, when we say uh, optimization uh, here, let's say I'm collecting the inventory uh, uh, data, which gives me, let's say, if I drill down into uh, the inventory, which provides me the uh, details about the cluster and the uh, VM instances. So if I see a VM instance uh, getting moved from one host to other host as part of the inventory, so I, I see that, OK, resources are getting uh, at a threshold. And I may want to deploy more resources to the uh, uh, at the VM host level, or, or I may want to deploy a new class, new uh, host into the cluster. So such optimizations are possible. And also, optimization is possible even at the provisioning side wherein uh, I can say I want to always deploy to a, a DRS cluster or a HA-enabled cluster. So I can do that kind of optimization with the data that uh, you will provide. Um, so, you, so you can visualize using metrics that um, maybe this driver is also collecting. I know that, for example, the driver, the first driver, yeah. Yes, so uh, since that the data is available as part of the uh, APIs out here, you should be able to access that one uh, through the NOVA APIs. And uh, you can write one uh, scheduler which can make use of the health amount data. Today, uh, in fact, you see the uh, NOVA compute, which is periodically uh, providing the uh, scheduling data. So tomorrow, we are looking for uh, an integration between the NOVA compute and the Health and Mon, which, when, which uh, Health and Mon can provide the required uh, inventory and alerts uh, data, which can be integrated with the schedulers. Uh, are you saying fine grained or? Yeah. Uh, okay. As, as, as I said, by default, we are going to collect it every five minutes. And if I my, if my deployment requires it to be different value, you, it it can be increased or it can be decreased. And also, um, depending on what hypervisor you are using, you may be able to do it instantaneously also. So as 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 soon as the cloud inventory changes, you should be able to sync up with that cloud inventory, and you should be able to provide the highest and greatest uh, data always. Yeah, uh, we, we use the uh, Libvirt uh, drivers for the KVM. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, the part which talks to the KVM computes out here. It is there in this word proxy, which will do a remote Libvirt connection to the KVM. And uh, it uses the Libvirt APIs. And also, it, ha it uses the Libvirt uh, event APIs also, which will uh, uh, look for any changes that happens on the VMs. So what I is looking for is mainly whether uh, it is hard-coded as the five minutes, or the collection interval is five minutes, or it, it, it adjusts itself to say whether uh, it collects it beyond five minutes or uh, below the uh, five minutes. OK, yeah. Uh, the monitoring, what happens uh, here is a continuous uh, uh, process. And uh, we collect the data as per the configuration settings. OK, and depending on wherever the eventing is provided, you will have the data instantaneously when the instance that particular event occurs.
Otherwise, by default, you anyway, you will go and collect it every five minutes. So that's the logic. Okay, uh, if I understand your question correctly, uh, what you're asking is uh, we collect the data every five minutes and whether you have some kind of aggregation logic, right? Okay, so uh, right now uh, we have not defined any of the aggregation uh, uh, blueprints as such and uh, we, are, we intend to do that aggregations and uh, what post-processing and pre-processing of that one in the future. Yeah, definitely it is there in the plans. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't get you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whenever, uh, since we are uh, listening to the uh, events that is occurring on the hypervisor side, uh, whether uh, a yeah. new instance came up or an instance was deleted or instance is updated, we get to know about the current status of that VM. So we will monitor the status of the VM to say whether it's a, it's a power state. So its power state is down or power state is up and accordingly we will provide the alerts. So as part of this alerts, uh, you can listen to those alerts and take actions. Yeah. One last question. Okay. Um, yeah, the, that, that is uh, actually the uh, part of the autonomics that we are thinking of and uh, yeah, that is still in plans and we haven't implemented anything yet. Okay, thank you very much and uh, 